afternoon, good night, good day. Uh, yes, I don't have a snazzy intro, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, first, I just want to say that this video is not real time, so I drew this in Clip Studio Paint and recorded all of the brush strokes through the program. So these are all of the brush strokes just kind of playing out, um, not in real time. So I just wanted to say that before uh, anyone thought that I was drawing really fast because I wasn't. <laughs> I don't know how long it took though. I was on vacation and not paying attention to time or anything to do with the clock or a calendar. So to get into the video, what is Art Fight? I assume you may know, but I just as a very quick um, intro to what Art Fight is. Art Fight is an annual art trading game. It takes place in July. So that is the beginning, like the first of July to the last of the month. And it's an art trading game because there are two different teams. Each year, different team names are decided on, which are kind of the themes. That just makes it a bit more fun for everybody. Uh, this year the themes are steampunk and cyberpunk. I am on cyberpunk and very happy about that um, because it just suits me better. <laughs> I like cyberpunk. So um, it's just been really fun so far and I did it last year. Last year was my first time doing Art Fight um, and I'm not the fastest so um, you get points for every quote-unquote attack you do, which is drawing someone else's character on the opposing team. So, you know, ideally would draw characters from the opposite team, the steampunk team, and depending on how complicated the drawing is, I would get certain points um, for that, and that would go towards my team. At the end of the month, you can see which team uh, has gathered the most points. It's mostly for fun though. So that's something that is the biggest takeaway, I think, from Art Fight. It's actually a like positive and wholesome thing that supports artists. You can connect with other artists, see their characters, see their stories, and just be positive and support everybody. And I think it's really hard to find little niches like that these days because social media is such a, um, a such a dark place it's difficult to get that vibe from there it reminds me doing art fight of um, the old deviant art days which is like 2009 2010 at least for me um, and just being able to really connect with everybody and relax and make things that are fun. I've been using this as a way to kind of test out different drawing and digital painting techniques and stuff. So it's been real interesting and I've learned a lot so far and I've only done two pieces. So this is the first piece that I did. The character is Glasses. I may be saying that wrong. G-L-A-C-I-S. Uh, is the character's name and I thought that he was wonderful and I felt like drawing him because he is cool and pretty and I just wanted to draw him in a field of ice um, with the cloud behind him because it made me happy and so I did it. Um, the person who made this character and the artist is Dreamly and Dreamly is D-R-E-A-M as in Maggie L-Y. <laughs> um, definitely go look at their page on Art Fight and their page on, I know they have a toy house under the same name. Uh, they have some really beautiful characters. So definitely go check that, them out and know that I am incredibly thankful that they posted glasses on art fight so I could have this fun drawing to do. Um, I actually, before I move on, just in case you don't know how to Google things, I can give you the URL for art fight. It's literally art fight as in one, one word, no spaces, dot net. 
so that's not, I don't think, .com, it's .net. Um, Artfight.net. Go check it out if you have some time. It does take some time, but if nothing else, you could pop on there and just see what's happening, because it's a really cool concept and a cool website. Um, and it only happens in July, so I would have a look at it now before it's over for the year. And moving on. Um, some of you may be returning to this channel. Some of you are probably new to the channel. And I just wanted to go over quickly what is next. I have been on vacation. And because of that, um, I actually took my first break from the comic. And it was a bit last minute because I did initially plan on getting the pages done in time to post them uh, but I, I just wasn't very uh, aware of the pages work coming up <laughs> I had been going on the time that it took to take the previous pages from start to finish and should have factored in how much more difficult these last pages are the rest of the pages in this chapter are all difficult <laughs> And they've been really difficult for me. Um, but things are just kind of getting crazier. And uh, therefore just more difficult to draw. And that's good. It's a good problem. But I wanted to do it justice. Or at least do my best to do it justice. And didn't want to be rushed in the middle of vacation to get those done I thought that it would be better for me and for the readers and everyone if I just took the week to do vacation and also get the sketches done um, they're almost done and then tomorrow and the next day I will finish the spread for the week and um, <laughs> I'm working on trying to get more on top of my buffer so I don't have situations like this again because it's my fault that I fell so behind um, but that's a bit beside the point um, for the moment I just wanted to run through what is next for this channel um, I will have content related to a few different things one is Blood Knot Blood Knot is the webcomic I was just talking about and I will have everything from tips to speed paints, um, things that are webcomic centric. Blood Knot is a more traditionally paneled comic, so it is page by page. So at the moment, I won't be going over things that are vertical scrolling, though a lot of things, uh, a lot of tips and tricks or weird things I run into can also be vertical scrolling web comics. Um, Blood Knot isn't a super incredibly crazy long project. It will take a few years probably, but um, it won't be, you know, a, a six year project or anything. Um, so once I'm done with Blood Knot, you know, I will also have content related to future projects that I work on. Um, I'll also have other art things, such as the art fight stuff, um, different illustrations. I do want to do, I would like to try some traditional art at some point, which will be interesting because I've almost never done traditional art before. I've done very little, so it might be a bit of like, come with me on a disaster trip, uh, but I just kind of want to make some time to have fun with it my microphone and setup as you can hear are definitely not top-notch so I wouldn't expect that to change at least quickly I am doing this on the side it's connected to my art but definitely not a focus of mine so I'm not going to be putting a lot of my money into getting the correct, quote unquote, correct uh, microphones and um, just set up so I can have better sound quality. I do expect to slowly figure out what works and what doesn't work with the tools that I already have. 
I can't say I'm the very best at figuring out how to prevent like just me breathing into the microphone and the popping and things like that. I'm I'm learning, but have some patience with me. And then maybe it's just not the right channel for you. Um, I when I work, I love to listen to other artists talk about what projects they have going on maybe just some random stuff in their life um, you know tips and stuff like that so I just really like channels like that and I want to create content that I find interesting so I'm hoping that what I create with this channel will end up excuse me I just had dinner um, will end up aligning with the type of things that I enjoy. Um, so about that video this week, um, I think I mentioned it earlier. Not sure. Um, but regardless, I am making another video this week. It may be the first of like a two part thing that I'm doing. I have to see how long it takes. But I will be walking through how I made the website that I have on Wix and this is because a few people have reached out and asked about how I made the website I have. I will say straight up my website is janky and uh, I tend to have what I want in my head and I find my way to like I claw my way to get there but I, I leave a trail of messiness behind me that I have to constantly work around. So I'm, I'm bending over backwards like updating a bunch of leaks, links and stuff every time I update the comic. I mean honestly it doesn't bother me as much as it should, which is why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it, but I am the last person to my way is the right way to make a website for a webcomic. I think that maybe certain things I'm doing will be like a stepping stone for certain people um, that you can kind of pick up and use because Wix is definitely its own kind of little monster and I have figured certain things out so you know if if people can take away one or two things from that video then I would be more than happy but um, I will be doing that this week. I'm just, I can only show you what I know. Um, I will say Walter Osley just came out with a video like today, wait, four days ago, sometime recently. And he went over his way of making a website for a comic, a webcomic on Wix. His way is entirely different and so much less of a headache. So if you want an easy way to do it, that makes sense watch Walter Osley's video. I will link it below. Um, if you want a website that works more like mine and you're stubborn, then stick through my video uh, or two videos. However, I end up making it uh, later in the week and, you know, take a stab at it. See what happens. And if it doesn't work out, you can always go back to what Walter did, and um, that is a surefire way of making something that works, which is pretty great. <laughs> That's a, a good feeling to be able to have something that won't break all the time, which I, I mean, mine has a bit here and there, but you know, it's fine. I, I've worked really hard on it. It took me months to figure stuff out because I had to teach myself, and I was least without good internet. Anyway, um, I figured it out, and um, if it's a little breakable, then that's okay. I'll fix it every time. <laughs> um, so that's that's most of the business I had to say. The uh, comic continues this Tuesday, so that is let's see, tomorrow's the fourth. The 6th, Tuesday, 
the six question mark um, is the next page of the blood not web comic I did take a an impromptu break that won't happen often but I was going on vacation I don't remember if I just said this you will run into this attention span memory problem of mine again do forgive uh, long story short I was on vacation and didn't plan well and decided not to uh, to post last week so I will be posting this Tuesday and Friday as normal and every week after that in the near or foreseeable future um, and with that that is all the business but I can just quickly mention what happened in the video that is going on because I haven't acknowledged it except for talking about art fight and um, you know the character's name and creator and all that um, but the process I just sketched it out first like normal and a lot of this is kind of like carry over from on my webcomic but I was also just trying something new um, because I haven't made a finished illustration just web pages with this process um, so I made the rough sketch uh, and then under that I made a layer of rough color very rough just to kind of get the idea down because I have a really hard time with color and if I do it super rough and like zoom out really far so it looks like a little thumbnail when I'm working on it then at least I can see how all the different colors relate to each other I've also been trying to stick as much as I can with limited palettes because uh, it's it's hard for my little brain um, over time I'm hoping I'll be able to go a little more crazy with colors but for now it will be a bit limited color palette which is okay because I do love limited color palettes I am a very boring color person sometimes and also very predictable but it makes me happy so <laughs> that's what the whole comic is about um, but after that I did clean lines kind of trying to keep them loose and not get super perfectionist about it and then I just went back into the color layer cleaned everything up and at the very end right here I changed the colors of some of the lines then I just added a few like color effects and stuff things that will make would make the character pop and so on. Okay. I guess that's it. <laughs> Bye.